Well, the time has come for our Pavlovian judges to dig into their crabby tweets. But uh, before they can dig in, we've got some rules to go over, and nobody is better at this than uh, Kevin Brosh. Absolutely, Elton. Here's how it all goes down. Each judge can award a chef up to 20 points, with 10 points possible for taste, five points for plating design, and finally, as many as five points for their originality in the use of our secret theme ingredient. And may the best chef prevail. Excellent job, Kevin. Now let's go up to the chairman and get the judging proper underway. Chef Scheib, it was an honor and pleasure to watch you cook out there. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Very Thank you. Impressive. Thank you very much. Would you please tell us what your inspiration was for today's secret ingredient? As we go through the menu here, we've tried to build a flow where you start out a little bit mild and work up to a peak and then sweep back down again towards the salad and the dessert. On top of that, we decided just to have a little bit of fun with the presentation. So I hope everybody enjoys it. Well, the first dish, this is a, a cocktail of fennel and tomato and avocados. And we've taken some crab and we've put a little basil and lemon oil on it. Just almost a natural dish. Very little flavoring to mask the flavors of the, of the crab meat. This serving piece makes it look look like you were formerly the chef on the Starship Enterprise or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you use this at a state dinner? Probably not. These are these these are all custom made pieces that I had made just for the show. If this is starting off mild for you, I can't wait to see the next course. Oh, yeah. um, there's a lot of flavor here, and the crab does come through. Well, immediately, I, I love the presentation. It's very fun and a fun way to start a meal. And then the aroma was very pleasing. And then tasting it's just delicious. So now your taste buds are all wakened up, I, right? They woke up, and you just startled them and made them very happy. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thanks. You know, I was worried, Walter, that the crab was going to be overwhelmed by the number of ingredients, but actually the crab comes through really nicely. Thank you so much, sir. What we've done is made a red curried sweet potato soup, which was sweet potatoes, sweated in some of the crab stock that we made. We've added ginger and kefir leaf and coconut milk and a little bit of red curry paste. We've got underneath it some Napa cabbage, and on top this wonderful big nugget of crab there, and we've taken that and put that in an Indonesian saute sauce. Oh. <coughs> It was, it's a little spicier than I was expecting. Okay. Um, but really good. And uh, I love the use of ginger. It's such a complex little plate. It's really remarkable. I like it very it, much. I really appreciate the silkiness of the, of the soup and the way that the, the, the complexity and the balance here is wonderful. I love that you've got the, the crispy uh, note from the cabbage. Uh, and I also really uh, enjoy the level of heat on the piece of, uh, of crab meat as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. No menu of crab could possibly be complete without a crab cake. We've bound it with just the lightest bit of scallop mousse and just folded it together. Now, underneath it, you have chipotle chilies and jalapenos. The sauce has got is a roasted corn coulis with chipotle. The fruit itself, it's banana, little fingerling bananas, mangoes, and pineapple. So it's, it's a lot of the components of a regular salsa, but we've cut it larger, and we've also served it warm. You know, I appreciate the fact that you tried to do the crab cake using no binder, but sort of collapsed in a heap. The flavors are great, but I like, I guess I like my crab cakes a little firmer. I don't want them to, to become a parfait before my eyes. Actually, I liked the texture because it, what held it together it seemed to be cooking it. But once again, you've, you've put together these different uh, ingredients. So every time I take a bite, I'm experiencing something, something new. And it's really an exciting dish to eat. Thank you. Now we're actually going to the crab claw. You can see you've got roasted beets and grilled Vidalia onions, some asparagus and microgreens. Now, having come off, of course, it's a little bit spicy. Now we're going to start to cool down the palate and work towards dessert. So, enjoy. Uh, you know, I want to say I, I especially appreciate the way you're talking us through the whole crab. The, the texture and flavor of all those different parts is different. It really and, is. And you're treating them differently, and I appreciate that. I, I also have to say I love the, the humor and the history uh, and, and wit in, this, in the salad. I like the vinaigrette very much. Yeah, I think it works beautifully. Thank you, sir. What I love about this dish is you really taste how good Dungeness crab is. The sweetness of the crab just shines through, you know, like a laser. Just the whole thing works. Thank you, sir. Excellent, Chef. Next course, please. The dish is called a pastilla, and it's historically made with saffron poached chicken and raisins and almonds, and it's wrapped in phyllo. The sauce that we've taken with here is a caramelized honey. We've just taken some lavender honey and just reduced it down in a pan just to turn the color a little bit and give a little bit more richness to it, so it's not quite so sweet. And we've added some saffron to it, 
and just a little, little touch of cream just to give it some texture. Once again, you've managed to not just make it uh, just a mash of flavor. It's I can taste every ingredient separately. And I love the surprise of the crab. I just thought it was terrific. You know, I honestly, I, I think I probably would like this better if it didn't have the crab in it. Just, bit, but maybe that's just me being kind of locked into a traditional idea of what what dessert is. I love the saffron. I love the aroma. The uh, the feel was perfectly done. I love the almonds. I think it was a very interesting move. Thank you. Chef Shai, excellent first time here in Gita Stadium. Thank Thanks you so much. much. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you all. Iron Chef Cora, always exciting to watch you cook. Thank you very much. What was your inspiration for today's secret ingredient? I really wanted to bring out some of the classical sides of it, some of the more refined uh, ways of eating crab, but also go a little global too. May we begin? Absolutely. What I have here is a crab tian, and the bottom part is crab, green apple, a mango, a little bit of radish, and then the top is a green apple and champagne mousse. So please enjoy. Iron Chef, what a, a marvelously sophisticated and beautiful dish this is. Champagne and, and green apple mousse is a lovely foil, I think, to the sweetness of the crab and quite just ex exquisitely beautiful preparation too. There's something so delightful about this dish, and maybe because I'm a girl, it's kind of a girly dish. Well, it is a wonderfully light dish. I was a little concerned about the texture of the mousse. There was a little too much air beaten into the mousse, but the whole thing worked. It's a lovely way to start a meal. This is a crab cake sandwich. It's got all the classic ingredients, the jalapeno, cilantro, peppers, onions, scallions. And then I just took a really nice salsa, just really brought out the essence of the avocado. It's a little ambrosia in the bottom with just a little crushed caracara to give it a little citrus kick. And then a slaw, a little jicama ginger root slaw uh, on the side. Uh, it's an excellent crab cake or crab cro croquette and it's great, and I do love that fruit. And I like going back and forth. The two textures complement each other perfectly. The taste, I don't I just think it's really, really great. Thank you very much. Well, this is my kind of crab cake. Doesn't melt, doesn't become a fallen souffle. I could have picked this up with my hands, but I had to hear from my <laughs> wife when, I, when it aired. It would have been really ugly. It would have been ugly. So, anyway, Thank but uh, this is my kind of crab cake. Well, now we're taking a trip to the Basque region of Spain. We've made as a rice paper galette. We've used all parts of the crab, the claw, the leg, the body. We've just lightly seared it. We took some gorgeous uh, baby fennel and just shaved it very lightly. And we actually used the broth that we steamed the crabs in with all the flavoring and added uh, smoky paprika to it uh, just to give it a compliment to the dish. So enjoy. Crab, I always think of it as such a delicate meat and actually you're showing how it can be used even with some fairly intense flavors and still kind of stand somehow stand up. It's just three very distinct flavors and they go together so well. It's very pleasing. I think this part of the dish is a little bit plain without adding that and uh, but you said absolutely to to mix them and it's that's exactly the right thing to do with this with this dish I, I think and it was it's terrific. We had to do a roasted crab. What we've done is we've taken a half of roasted crab, we've taken it we've done a spice rub, some paprika, cayenne, oven roasted it and then took the tamale out of the top and made a tamale toast out of it with a little bit of a scallion, onion, uh, some of the tamale. And then we've got a beautiful coconut tapioca curry um, sauce for it. I, I have to say, I, when, when I'm in a restaurant, I'm generally kind of lazy and I, 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 I don't want to work too hard usually, but that's, but, I, but I appreciate that you did this because I think it's inherent to the crab experience. So I'm, really, I'm glad that you, that you presented, that, presented it that way and I think it's really cool. Well, I could just eat the broth and the toast for like days. The crab, although it had good flavor, dried out when you roasted it. And sort of the more I dug into the claw, the drier the meat got. But it was easily solved because I just put it in the broth, and that broth, as I said, could satisfy me for days. This is a very classic Japanese um, steamed custard called chawanmushi. The idea is that it's a treasure hunt. The treasures in our dish uh, are edamame. We've got candied ginger and at the very bottom you'll find of course the treasure of the day which is Dungeness crab. And then we put some really, which I love, the little marsh crabs, which we just deep fried and almost candied a little bit. Well I, again I think the presentation is really is, is adorable. I'm not getting a big crab flavor and the and the, the texture is, is is not the most beautiful um, but you are combining some pretty crazy things here 
Yeah, it's adventurous. <laughs> it's a lot of different tastes and a lot of tastes that I like. I'm not certain I like it all together and the texture of the top is a little, it's not my favorite, but there are tastes in there that I just adore and the presentation is really beautiful. Yeah, th this is a kind of a crabless wonder to me. It doesn't really work, although I like all the individual elements of it. And the texture, it, it's sort of, the custard is breaking up, and I guess it could be because of all the stuff you put in it. Excellent, Iron Chef. Thank you Always very much. exciting to have you. Thanks. Who leaves laughing? Who leaves crying? The verdict on Iron Chef America returns. Hi, food fans. Welcome back to Iron Chef America. This has been a battle, a dungeon-esque crab, and it's the moment that we have all been waiting for, the verdict. Let us remember, there are 20 possible points in the competition. Ten are given for taste and flavor, five for presentation, and a final five for originality. Now let's go up to the chairman and find out whose cuisine reigns supreme. Today, two champions met in battle dungeonous crab here at Kitchen Stadium. Iron Chef Carl. Chef Shaib. The judges have spoken, and the winner is... Chef Shai. So an impressive total of 55 points for Chef Walter Shai. And while originality ended up a tie, wins in both taste and plating are what helped carry the day for Chef Shai and his team. As for Chef Scheib, uh, he goes off and adds Iron Chef America Champ to his already formidable resume. As for Iron Chef Katkura, well, she'll go sharpen her culinary claws and prepare to fight another day. And so it goes. I'm Alton Brown. On behalf of the chairman, Kevin Brosh, and everyone here at Kitchen Stadium, I bid you good eating.